This Week in Startups is brought to you by SendPro Online from Pitney Bowes. Save time and money no matter what you ship or mail. Try it free for 30 days and get a free 10-pound scale when you visit pb.com slash twist. LinkedIn. You need LinkedIn jobs to find the right people for your business. Post a job today at linkedin.com slash twist and get $50 off your first job post. And NetSuite by Oracle. The business management software that handles every aspect of your business in an easy-to-use cloud platform. Right now, NetSuite is offering you valuable insights with a free guide called Seven Key Strategies to Grow Your Profits at netsuite.com slash twist. Upcoming launch events. Apply for open office hours with Jason on Monday, August 26th. Get candid feedback with the potential to be featured on This Week in Startups. Apply at officehours.launch.co. Get your free founder pass or purchase a VIP ticket for Launch Scale in San Francisco, October 7th and 8th at launchscale.net slash tickets. Hey, everybody. Welcome to This Week in Startups. It's your boy, Jason Calacanis, here in Santa Monica at NetSuite's office in their podcasting studio. Thanks to my friends at NetSuite by Oracle for hosting me, as always. Uh, today, I'm really excited about our next guest because his business has gone supernova, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how to manage growth and uh, how to basically go viral. Uh, my guest today is Stephen Galanis. He's a fellow Greek. And he's the co-founder and CEO of Cameo, which is at Cameo.com. Yes. And people know Cameo. I, I became aware of it because I listened to the Howard Stern show. Yep. And essentially the Whack Pack. Yeah, they've, is, they've crushed it on there. Have crushed it yeah. on Cameo. So welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Uh, and a baba buoy to you all. Uh, <laughs> it's a little Howard Stern reference. But you have like uh, an assorted array of people on cameo doing personalized messages for money yes how did you come up with this idea and when did you come up with it yeah so the founding story is actually incredibly interesting um obviously we we're talking about our shared greek roots but we had the idea for this leaving my yaya's funeral it was October 5th, 2016. My co-founder, Martin, was a movie uh, producer and NFL agent. And he flew to Chicago for the day just for the funeral. My uncle is the godfather to his kids. So he's gotten very close to our family. And Martin was repping a bunch of NFL players, but not superstars. His one and only client was a guy named Cassius Marsh, who was probably the 15th best Seattle Seahawks player. A few weeks before that, Cassius Marsh had gone viral because he had $50,000 worth of Magic the Gathering cards stolen from his car. He was parked at the Seahawks facility, had a big Gucci bag, smash and grab. Somebody thought there was jewels or money or something like but that. But there were really there. Magic the Gathering cards. But there cards. were Magic the Gathering cards. So, so Cash, I have so many questions. So, but, Ca so yeah. Cassius Marsh, the six foot four defensive end, goes to Twitter and starts tweeting out, and he went to UCLA, so he's got a huge following, just as many of these guys do. Yeah. You know, UCLA fans, USC, Alabama, Notre Dame. You know, you go to one of those schools now, you become famous even when you're in high school, just mm -hmm. as a recruited athlete. So he sends a tweet out, and he goes, hey, 12s, which is what Seahawks fans say. I know you thought there were money or jewels in this bag, but what was in it is more valuable than money or jewels to me. It is my life. Give me the cards back. I will not press charges. So he puts it out there. He goes viral on Barstool, on ESPN, all over the place. People are, are kind of making fun of him, but also just like- For being a nerd. For being a nerd and, and more, but he brought all this publicity to Magic the Gathering. Right. Martin tried to get Magic the Gathering, the company, they're called the Westerly Wizards. They're yes. based in Seattle. They make billions of dollars. Make billions of dollars. They were, Martin was just trying to get him a, a, a simple endorsement deal to fly down to Vegas for the next card show. Right. And he couldn't even get this company that he had just made go viral, a Seahawk player, a hometown person, he couldn't even get him an endorsement deal. So the problem we were trying to solve at the very beginning was, how do we help people monetize their social in a way that's brand positive? Mm. We all follow athletes and influencers yeah. that, that are posting shit that you know they don't care about. You know, right. it's like things that are off brand. So we were trying to think about this, solving this problem. These guys have huge social media followings. There are more famous people today than there've ever been. People today are more famous than they've ever been. Yet the amount of money that one can make from their social, it, it's really like the top makes all the money and everybody else makes nothing. Kim Kardashian gets a quarter million dollars. In, U Kyrie, in YouTube, Kylie. this is incredible. Yeah. 
the top 3% of YouTube creators make 97% of all the ad revenue on the platform. It makes total sense. So there are people that are literally world famous. Yeah. And they're not able to monetize in a meaningful way. So we we're talking about this. We were talking about this idea in the car of selfies being the new autograph. People would come up to Martin in the restaurant Constantly. and they want to take a picture with cash. They weren't pulling the sharp instead of pulling the Sharpie out, right. they're taking a selfie. So we had this idea of selfies being the new autograph. And then Martin pulled out his phone and he showed me a video that he'd gotten made for his buddy Brandon. Brandon at the time was an executive in Nike's marketing department, worked with LeBron and Kyrie and Kevin Durant and the biggest athletes on earth. But he loves the Seahawks more than anything. When he had his first son, Martin got this player, Cassius Marsh, to send a 10-second video saying, Hey, Brandon, it's Cassius Marsh from the Seahawks. Heard about your son, Maverick. If he gets your athletic ability, he'll be playing for the Seahawks one day. Go Hawks. Right. This executive at Nike thought it was so cool. He posted it on Instagram and said it was the best gift he ever got in his life. Huh. And this guy's so close to LeBron and, and all that that he named his kid Maverick. Like, right. like, after, like Maverick after Maverick Carter, Carter right? Yeah. So it's like, you know these guys and, and you're this big executive in marketing at Nike and you are so excited mm -hmm. that you're going to buy Cassius Marsh of all people. Mm -hmm. So that to us was a huge aha moment. And when he showed me that video... I went to Duke. I have a bunch of buddies in the NBA. I, I grew up in the entertainment business a little bit through some family connections. So I have access to people like that, but I was trying to put myself in the, those shoes. And I said, okay, I could get Lance Thomas, you know, who is one of my best friends from college, to go do a video like this one off for my mom. But maybe I can do that one time. Yeah. You know, you, you can't do that at scale. But I saw that video and I'm like, that is so cool. And this actually could be the new autograph. Right. So we started by launching uh, you know, this platform only with professional athletes. Uh, Martin and I are not technical, so we had to recruit uh, you know, a technical co-founder. We called on my, my very good buddy from Duke, Devin Townsend, who's our other co-founder now. And the thing that was cool about Devin, Devin actually was one of the first Vine stars. So our CTO and our co-founder is world famous on Vine back in the day. He had over 900 million loops. His How did they screw up Vine? That <laughs> so is I've, amazing. I've, I've How learned... did Twitter screw up Vine? So one thing that's Sorry super... Sorry for the no, aside, no, no. but one thing it that's... is bonkers. They were what... sitting on a powder keg. Totally. And now TikTok has basically become yes, Vine. Yes, they right? screwed it up so bad. Yeah, yeah, and it's actually interesting. There's a misconception. Most people think that Vine was this thing and that Twitter bought it and screwed it up. But uh, Kevin Tao, who's at Spark now, who's one of our investors, was leading you know, Corp Dev at, at Twitter at the time. They actually bought Vine pre-launch, which right. not many people know. I knew that. So yeah. they incubated this thing, and I think they just were never able to find a way to make money. And and seems like just incompetence. I'll be honest. They had Periscope yeah. and Vine yeah. before anybody. Those two things were video OG, super interesting. Yep. And. Twitter couldn't find a way to keep it together. And I remember meeting uh, the number one Vine star at the f time. I forgot his name. It'll come to me in a second. Um, but he's an actor out here. And uh, he uh, was doing really well. And I said, who do you know over at Twitter? And he said, I don't know anybody. I was like, you've never been to Twitter and you're the number one Vine star? Yeah. He's like, no, can you introduce me to somebody at Twitter? I'm like, what? what? And I that, don't understand why. Why are they not that having is, a top that is hundred totally. at Twitter's office? That is absolutely one of the things that you know we heard loud and clear early. Right, was the community aspect of building this platform was huge. But anyways, so Devin, my co, my other co-founder, him and his very best friend Cody Kolajesic from Duke, who's his roommate, is now world famous YouTuber Cody Co. So the two of them uh, were working at Microsoft and Amazon, uh, Microsoft and Apple, respectively. They decided to quit their jobs in 2014 and spent a year traveling Southeast Asia. Wow! And they were like, they they were on Vine the whole time, and they became world famous. Cody ended up with 3.6 billion loops on Vine. Crazy. Devin had 900 million. They became so famous that if they'd go to Beta Breakers or Coachella or Lollapalooza, they would get mobbed. But at that point, but still had no way to make money. They had no way to make money. So, so they were. They were, they were famous more famous rich. than they were rich. Right. And ultimately, that was the type of person that we were trying to solve the problem for. And I think in having someone in Devin, my co-founder, that was one of those people, mm. right? Like if Devin wasn't on, didn't build the platform, I would have just wanted him on it. Got it. And, you know, we really launched it with pro athletes because we, we tried to be focused with one vertical. We didn't find initial product market fit with the pro, with, athletes. With the pro athletes. 
But the second that we got uh, Devin and his, his roommate Cody on there, I remember one day Devin's like, I think Cody, you know, who had 2 million YouTube followers at the time, and people like Cody would do pretty well at this. Yeah. And we first really found product market fit with early Vine stores. And huh. to this day, probably three of the top five talent we've ever had on Cameo, and the first three mm. were all ex Vine stars. Fascinating. So you tap them, and then how much were they charging in the initial experiment? Uh, Per yeah, so, so the very beginning, like when Devin and Cody launched, when they got on, they were literally opening up their Instagram DMs because over the years, mm -hmm. there had just been thousands of people asking things sure. like this. So Devin was saying, here's a, you know, I just made this website. I'm trying to look for feedback. I'll make this video for your sister for $1. And Cody was charging three. And then they kept doing it. And the feedback they got was best dollar I ever spent, best $3 I've ever spent. And as we just kept going, the feedback was getting better and better. And I think today, you know, Cody's charging about a hundred bucks. Right. And it takes him 10 minutes to do it. Oh, it takes 30 seconds. I mean, literally right. the way it works, they, they read this card, they can accept or decline any message. If they accept it, it's almost like a Tinder interface. So they swipe yeah. right. The teleprompter opens up. They re can record right on their iPhone, send it off and get paid. So it is literally like Tinder and Snapchat mixed it's so with easy monetization for built in. Yeah, and it's super easy. And you guys super take easy. half the money, a third? We take 25%. Oh, okay. Less yep. than the App Store. Yeah, we take 25%. And 25% versus the 45% that YouTube takes. Correct. So almost so, half so of the, YouTube's take. For the creators, it's great. Uh, the App Store thing is, is pretty interesting because to this day, we do not sell cameos in the iOS app because Apple would try to take more than we do. You are a busy founder, and I don't want you wasting your time and money trying to find the best rate for postage and to send your packages. I want you to use Send Pro Online from Pitney Bowes. With that product, you're going to be able to send packages and mail right from your desk for as low as, wait for it, $4.99. No, not $499. $4.99, less than you pay for a pour over coffee here in San Francisco. No matter what you need to send, packages, overnights, letters, just click and save and use this offer for Send Pro online. Only $4.99 a month. You go to pb.com slash twist, pb as in Pitney Bowes, pb.com slash twist, and you will get a free 30 day trial plus a free 10 pound scale so you're not wasting any money you can track your shipments get email notifications you're going to gain access to the u.s postal services savings for letters and priority mail shipping if you don't know what that is you'll find out it's going to save you a bundle and you can easily compare rates using their online software of course you can print the labels and stamps from your own printer you know that that's table stakes today so i want you to go get that free 30-day trial and the scale at pb.com slash twist pb.com slash twist you need to be efficient you need to use the mail, obviously, and sometimes that can be super inefficient if you have to go to the post office. Now you get the post office in your office. Experience the better way to ship with a free trial to send pro online from Pitney Bowes. Please go save time and go save money and put it into your business. Thanks again to Send Pro Online from Pitney Bowes for supporting this week in startups. I truly and personally appreciate it. Okay, let's get back to this episode. Right. That's so we, a little so bit we, of a challenge. So we only sell on Android and on uh and on cameo.com today. Got it. So you have to go, you can, you have to. Which we, 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 fundamentally, the we fundamentally disagree with because they essentially are calling our product a digital good, similar to a coin or similar to that. Uh, but we really think we're similar to like fiber where talent can yeah. come on and, and, and really they're producing this thing. And, you know. The app store cost for distribution is reasonable when you're a video game and, and you you're would selling be, air. Yeah, if you were a video game and you were used to, you know, at GameStop selling them a, you know, a sixty dollar video game for thirty or forty bucks, you'd feel like thirty percent charge is cheap. And even with subscriptions, they make it I think fifteen percent in the second year. So for something like Com.com yeah. or Fitbod, it makes sense. But you you are seeing people like Spotify and Netflix no longer accepting app store. Amazon, you know, if you go to buy a book on Amazon on iOS, you can't do it. You have to go to Amazon.com. So it's so dumb. I mean, it, I really it, think Apple's going to get cracked yeah, by the Justice Department the, the on Supreme this issue. The Supreme Court will get them. I'm I, like, it's just, yeah. it's absolute. Um, yeah, they're controlling the marketplace unnecessarily. Like, I, if I want to buy an audio book and I use Audible, which I do, I, I don't want to start a second account. I have all my books in one place. 
Like literally, I have to, in the Audible account, put it on my favorite list, go to my Chrome browser, buy it there, and I can't buy it in the yeah. Amazon, but I can buy a cable in the Amazon thing. It's so dumb. And Apple Apple should want companies like Cameo to come out and make their ecosystem yeah. better, right? Like today, if you're an Apple customer, uh, let's say you're married and, and your, your husband has an Android, right? Yeah. He's got a better experience than you do, right? You know, as as a uh, as an iPhone user, which is crazy, and yeah. Apple never wants that. Yeah, I think they're trying. They're they're the good reason they're doing this is they want to keep control of phones crashing and malware, and I get that. But I do think that you have to think about the rake, as we say in poker or gambling. If the rake is too high, then it just breaks for people. So now you have hundreds of celebrities on the podcast. We have 17,000. 17,000. Yeah. Of those, the number one is Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner charges the most, most. money. $2,500. $2,500. I think Lil John, the rapper, is also there too. Um but, but they don't get the most. They don't get the most bookings, right? The the most booked person of all time is someone named Evan Breen, who's one of those early Vine stars. He, uh, you know, had just gone viral. Another or number two all time, someone named Nick Coletti. I actually ran into him on the on the beach today. So like these are these very niche, but they're. But their followers. What do they charge? Twenty five bucks. These were 50 yeah, bucks? probably twenty five fifty. They were in that range. It, they've kept it lower. And one of the things we always tell talent is that they should optimize for the amount of cameos created versus how much they charge. Because ultimately, our value prop to talent is fans are paying to make you more popular, right? Like yes. you are actually getting paid to have your content dis- distributed. And look, if they were zero dollars, it would become Instagram DM or Twitter DM. They, they would never be able to keep up with yeah. the demand. So there has to be some price point that's a necessary friction for fulfillment. But at the end of the day, we always tell them to think about how many people they can possibly you know, delight. Yeah, and I see some, I'm uh, friends with Perez Hilton, the blogger. I knew him from the blogging days. And I see he is all over it. And he loves it. And totally. he you puts could, a total you could, amount of enthusiasm totally. into it that seems completely unnecessary. But he is Perez Hilton. And, so. and Perez- He's you on could, 11. You could argue Perez is maybe the most valuable talent that we have, right? So again, because we didn't create- Why is cameo, that? Why is he the most valuable? So- if you go to our site, the way that we rank any individual, like the way our algorithm works is it's a mix of four functions. Uh, number one, how many cameos have they done? Okay. Number two, their streaks. So Who's done the most? Uh, that Evan Breen has Got done it. the most. What what's, is it? 1,000? 4,000. 4,000 4, yeah. cameos? Yeah. How quickly they respond uh-huh. and their average ratings. Okay. So, per- so wait, the rating, the speed at which they respond. The number. The number. And their all-time like fulfillment rate. So if seven days goes by and they don't do it, it's called uh-huh. an expiration. Perez has never let a video expire. He's done over 3,000. He's only gotten five star reviews and his average turnaround time is like an hour. So and in many ways- And he's 25 bucks. And he's 25 bucks. I think he's- Is he 25 in a, or 50? I think 50? he's now in the 40s. I, I saw so him raise So 40 bucks, 3,000. So he's made over $100,000 talking into his iPhone. He's done, yeah, he's done incredibly well. And, and this is also a, an outlet now where, again, every time- Almost all of them are bought for gifts. So it's me buying for you, you sharing on Twitter, yes, you sharing on yes. Instagram. So you are distributing his content and, and making people you know, recognize him again and making people you know remember how funny he is and all that type of stuff. So you know, some of our best talent are these nost- are are like really nostalgic people. So someone like Andy Dick has just done fantastic on the platform. Um, Gilbert Godfrey is one of the top. Gilbert, earner, yes, they're earners right now, and does he do his thing? And they where do, he squints his eyes and talks like this. His cameos are fantastic. Uh, Michael Rappaport's probably my favorite person on the I entire platform. I love Michael platform. Rappaport. He's his crazy. His cameos are unbelievable. And actually, when Kleiner Perkins gave us our term sheet, uh, Ilya Mamoun booked. Michael Rappaport to tell us to take the Kleiner Perkins money and it's like an all time oh my god I gotta see that like he literally he goes you know money bags he's like take that Kleiner Perkins money and it was just like it was all time I just love when he's just like beep you Donald Trump yeah, yeah. Beep, staying Donald Trump. And you the, and the pig, big, you. The big personalities <laughs> are really who does it. So our best. So that's Perez. Our, our, our best people are not 
the most famous on the platform. Right. Our best people are the biggest personalities. Got it. So reality TV stars, the Real Housewives yeah. is a vertical, are probably our best performing vertical. If you were a YouTuber, Vine star, you are in the NBA for making video content. So yeah. it isn't surprising that you do super well. Uh, people that are super authentic, Snoop Dogg, uh, has probably made more in a month than anybody's ever made in a month. And really? What? Because it's all all the data is public, right? You put it out there publicly. Yeah, we don't like we won't like talk about that. But Snoop's made over six figures in a month before. What? And and you know that's without leaving his house. Without leaving his house in under two hours of work. Because like I I know like you can get Snoop Dogg to come to your party for ten twenty grand. Like yeah. he'll stop by and blaze a doobie. Yeah. But we're talking about making a hundred grand in a month. Not leaving his house. Yeah. One of the things we That's very bonkers. early, I remember when Andre Drummond, um, who's a max salary NBA player on the Detroit Pistons, yeah. he was like our first big time, big time athlete to join. He was making 25 million a year. And when he came to us, he was like, I want to do this, but I have no idea how to price myself. Because today we yeah. let the talent pr- set their own price. And so that's another you know part of the marketplace that you know we're yeah. still optimizing. But early, we'd never wanted a talent to say, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do this video because I'm worth more than that. So we right. let them set their own price. But early, I told him, Andre, take 25 million, divide by 2,000 hours in a work year, 50, 40 hour weeks, divide by 60, you make $208 per minute. Yeah. So if you're charging 100 or $150 per video, you can do two to three per minute on our platform. You can make more on Cameo per minute than you do in the NBA on a max salary. And you know, for us, that was incredibly enticing because almost all these are gifts. So now there's a father out there in Detroit that could choose to take to buy their kid Andre Drummond wishing a happy birthday yeah. that he'll cherish forever as opposed to taking him to the game. Yeah. It's almost better. Yeah, well, they have it forever. They have the it forever. Thing. And and you think about this idea of the selfie being the new autograph, right? The classic autograph, like I'm a very avid autograph collector. You go into my condo and I've got all types of cool memorabilia. But the thing that's cool is like these are going on your digital wall. Yes. They're going on Instagram. They're, yeah. You're tweeting it out. You're putting it on Facebook. What is the rights situation? The person has the rights to it for all time. They can't so use we, it in a commercial or correct. something. Correct. So you're not allowed to, the, the customer is not allowed to use it commercially. Um, Do they know actually, that, right? Cameo and the talent own the rights to the content. Got it. But we give a permanent leasehold to people to distribute and we encourage them to be shared on uh, off of off of our network. So, you know, but we it's want not like the- Cameo can then go take these and monetize them without the person. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So you, they don't have any worry that this is going to go on forever. But you do Correct. you have had issues where people will put in like uh secret codes or yeah. things that are inappropriate and some people got caught up saying yeah, we, we white had, power nonsense. We've had some really interesting things that have happened. Um uh, You'd probably the most famous, the one you're talking about, was the Brett Favre incident that we had in in end of November last year. And essentially what happened was uh, somebody came in and, and wrote a coded message and it said, uh, shout out to the Handsome Truth and the GDL boys. You guys are patriots in my eyes. Keep waking them up. Don't let the small get you down. And and never forget the USS Liberty and the men and women that died that day. Sounds now, totally innocuous. Totally innocuous. Brett does cameos all the time for yeah. veteran groups and things like that. It turns out uh, that the small was um, an anti-Semitic reference to yarmulkes. The USS uh, Liberty was a, a ship that Israel bombed accidentally, a U.S. Navy uh, ship, and killed people. Okay. But these are all right dog whistles that no, you know nobody yeah. reasonably i'm a history major i i never i didn't recognize I've one never, of those i've things. never heard of any of these, yeah. these so how do you respond it. to that now you just you pre-vet these things so what we've done in the immediate aftermath there's just a cool podcast i did about this with entrepreneur magazine what we did in the immediate 24 hours was we built what we today internally call a nazi bot and what nazi bot does it it uses uh you know different ai to, to basically read every single request coming through and we've uploaded a, a key terms list from the southern poverty law center to flag things like that now in this particular case that was you know that was a tough one and sure. and the talent ultimately can accept or decline anything so if yeah. there's ever anything they feel uncomfortable they can say no Hiring is not as simple as just putting an ad in the paper and just dumping it on some job board. Nope. That's a waste of time. You are busy growing your business. You need to stay focused, but you need to reach the right candidates at the right time. That's where LinkedIn comes in. We love LinkedIn. Over 600 million members visit LinkedIn to make connections, learn, and grow as professionals and discover new job opportunities. 
LinkedIn members add 15 new skills to their profiles and apply to 35 job posts every two seconds. I mean, it is active over there. You know that you get the alerts, you see your friends changing jobs, you get updates on your home screen, great news. Well, that's how LinkedIn gets your job posts in front of the right people with the right hard and soft skills to meet your role requirements. They're going to get you those people when they're on there updating their skills and they're going to show them really cool jobs. Here is CMO Presh creating a job post on LinkedIn in minutes. Some pre-screening questions to identify the preferred candidates, selecting a custom budget and seeing how many people would be looking at the job postings. Then LinkedIn auto populates candidates they think might be a good fit for you, right? So they're helping you thread the needle there. So get $50 off your first job posting right now. Go to linkedin.com slash twist, linkedin.com slash T-W-I-S-T to get a fitty 5-0 from J-Cal, your boy. Terms and conditions do apply. But get that 50 right now, linkedin.com slash twist. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. People are now starting to understand that you, you can be duped. Yeah. And a person's intent here is to wish somebody a happy birthday. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to be like, oh, Brett Favre's a Nazi. They're going to totally, be like, but, okay, he got duped. But tell Who us, cares? That, Move tell on. us that, was, yeah. that was almost an Armageddon crisis at the time, right? Because let's just say that Wrangler Jeans had pulled his uh, oh, multi-million right. dollar endorsement a, deal. Yeah. And then suddenly there becomes Domino a cap effect, of, there yeah. becomes a cap of in every agent out there saying, hey, don't work with Cameo because this is what could happen. Yeah. So for us, you know, we fought really hard against that. We when that happened, there was only one talent that left the platform. We got up in front of it. Um, you know, we we let all of our talent know what happened. And look, we put our safety record up against mm -hmm. any platform that's ever existed. At yeah. the time we'd done a hundred thousand cameos, right? A yeah. hundred thousand. That was our first incident. And you think about how many in the first hundred thousand tweets, how many of those were bad or how many yeah, bad Instagram I mean, listen, posts or YouTube? It's like blaming somebody for following somebody on Twitter and then the person then goes and says something crazy. Right. And you're like, Okay, I followed Milo Yiannopoulos when he was a normal person. Yep. And then he became like this alt right troll figure. Like we all knew Milo Yiannopoulos from the blogging days. Totally. He was like a tech blogger who wrote for The Guardian. Yep. He was like a normal person and they yep. went crazy. So you have to have some code of conduct. You won't let somebody like Milo or some crazy alt right person on the platform. Or so the, how do you deal the, with that? So this is actually really interesting. We had um do you know who Bagel Boss is? He, bagel he went, boss. This guy, the guy who went crazy in the went, bagel store. Yeah, just yeah. went crazy in the in the bagel He's like, store. women won't date yeah, short guys. What are you five laughing foot, at? Why don't tall. you attack me? And then he so threw him on actually, the ground. Like literally today, I was I was dealing with this. Uh, he's on the platform, and you know he's one of those new people, like these new stars that gets manufactured yeah. overnight. A lot of our customers, not exactly how you want to become a star, but sure, totally. A lot of our customers were. Uh, Requesting him, they're coming to the site sure. and saying, "Hey, I'd like this guy Bagel Boss out." And he's got time. He got time, so we, you know, I don't know if he joined inbound or whatever. We have yeah. seventeen thousand people. I'm not sure how they all sure. get there, but we had um, a, st a a talent that we really like that uh, posted on Twitter and posted on Instagram yesterday that because this guy's on and he's misogynistic, that she was no longer going to be supporting the platform. Got it. And and one of the things that that over breakfast today I was talking to her about was like you know I'm like charisma I'm like I I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying and and at the same time like I actually applaud you for taking a stance if you feel that way but I was asking her like where do, you know where do we draw the line yeah. and specifically we were talking about politics right and yeah. we've had politicians reach out to us and I mentioned a couple hmm. prominent democratic politicians that have talked about coming on the platform and she's super excited about that and I said okay well if we get all them and then Donald Trump comes on I'm leaving, right? So Got one it. of the really tough things I think for a lot of people is people are cool, like depending on where you stand on different issues, yeah. like this person or that person, yeah. if they're on, I don't want to be on. And and we're just trying to be a ubiquitous platform. So as of now, we have three main rules, no nudity, no inciting violence, no hate speech, if you do those in the actual cameos. Outside of that, you know, we do not judge who you are before Got or it. what you're doing off the platform. And look, we might have to change those rules one day, right? Like we've- Yeah, I mean, if somebody was a Nazi on their, you know, whatever, gab.com account or whoever lets Nazis on it, you're not going to allow a Nazi on the platform. And and again, you know, we, at this point, what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop, you know, rules that can be applied over and over and over again, right? Yeah. So, so for us- 
like while I totally understood her thing, you know, there's other people that are objectionable in other ways. Uh, well, see, I mean, if you had Andrew Dice Clay on or Snoop Dogg might trigger totally. people because some of his lyrics might be misogynistic and smoking weed might, for people who are not down, totally. we, here's a great example. be triggering for so people. So I was, I was telling uh, Charisma- Can you smoke weed in a video? That's legal. Yes. I was telling Charisma about this today, yeah. right? Uh, we last month in June did a thing with the Trevor Project um, and- about 500 of our talent opted Explain in. Explain what that is. Yeah. The Trevor Project is a, is a charity that um, helps prevent suicide among GLBT youth. Right? Mm-hmm. Great cause. For Gay Pride Month, we had over 500 talent agree to, to join us in donating their portion of the proceeds to this thing. And you know, we raised some good money for the charity. We had talent, when we sent the email, actually reach out to us saying, you know, I can't believe you're supporting this filth. Like I want to leave the play. So the big thing is that you you really can't, you can't win. And at the end of the day, you just have to be okay with, you know, having a framework that works most of the time. And and look, there might be things that happen in the future. I remember when the first porn stars were signing up for Cameo, we do not allow nudity, but if you got famous for doing that, should you be allowed on the platform? And ultimately- Nothing illegal about being a porn star. And there's nothing illegal about being a porn star. And in fact, you know, this was a big debate in our office and we had- uh, a lot of the women in the office talking about, you know, should this be that, should that, but if you're not naked, it's like, it's literally yeah. the same. And a lot of them are crossover too. I like one of them was on entourage or something and trying to be a crossover artist. So yeah, I, it does create an issue internally at your company, which is another one you can highlight, which yep. is people want to come to work every day and be in a place they can be proud of. Totally. But isn't Patreon all adult stars too? I, I mean, I thought Patreon was like <laughs> driven by, the adult industry of like that's a vertical and i think they allow vertical, nudity on yeah, that that's a vertical that's worked well for them you know we do not allow nudity uh the the porn vertical on cameo is is tiny when compared yeah. to the seventeen thousand people but i at, can be topless totally but at the end of the day because i do get a lot of requests for that you know like just <laughs> but, but again at, at, the end of the, at the end of the day all we can do yeah. as a platform is try to create rules that we think are scalable yeah. and sustainable and and you know Part of it is like that Supreme Court judge once said, he's like, sometimes when you just see it, you know it. You'll know it, yeah. And, and the tough one with this particular one, I, I went in before this meeting, I watched every single cameo that the bagel boss did, and not a single one of them like violated yeah. you know, the, the rules that we put out there. And if he did, we, you know, he'd be off. Yeah. I think, yeah, the, the thing you'll have is if they're on your platform and you're making them money, you have a higher standard than just say Twitter, which is- well, they're not giving them any money. So yep. once you start making money with people, they're your partner and you're endorsing something. So by the bagel boss getting paid and you monetizing it, it is a an, an implicit endorsement that you've approved them to be on the platform. So if he does something even off platform that's truly offensive, yep. then you are well, I think, actually I think the helping second, pay his rent. I think the second two that you start being the gay people gatekeeper as well, judging who can be on and who can be off. If you're doing that, then everybody that is on, you're implicitly saying that you support them, right? right. And at 17,000 people, like I, you know, I can't necessarily say that every person on there yeah. is a choir boy and a saint, right? I remember, uh, you know, Brett Favre is a great partner of ours. And I remember um, we had a certain talent that that somebody on our team had reached out to and she said, you know, I won't be on Cameo because Brett Favre's on and he sent me a dick pic once. You ah. know, so like, and especially in this age of- What about OJ? Would you let OJ on the platform? You know, again, this is an interesting, this is an interesting- Let's think it out I here think. because he was convicted of, uh, in the, he, he did, yeah, he's a convicted, I guess, kidnapper and a convicted, uh, oh, he lost the civil case. Yeah. It's pretty clear he murdered his wife and that poor guy. But again, well, too, right? Like we might, you know, it, it might be that if you're a convicted felon, you can't be on Cameo, right? So, yeah. so part of these rules, I think a lot of the platforms right now are catching fire for yeah. for this. And, you know, at Twitter, they've taken the stance that they're going to be radically free speech and they're not going to sit there unless you, you do something egregiously bad. Um, at Cameo, we're still learning like what... Yeah. What is going to be the way that that we hold it? But you know, I do I do think we have a responsibility to keep our platform safe. But yeah. at the same time, like we also want to make sure that you know one person something that offends one person like might be what gives somebody else a lot of joy. And if you, I remember Sam Harris, a friend of mine who's a podcaster, left Patreon. 
because he was specifically like, I don't like the idea that there's a platform that will then decide whose opinion yep. in the world is worthy of being monetized. So he just left. Yep. And I guess Jordan Peterson, another member of the um, we're never going to make intellectual everybody. dark web. A lot of those folks were totally. like, we're just going to make our own platforms or we'll take it directly so we don't risk being disintermediated. Yeah, I think, um, uh, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just interesting. And when I asked yeah. this person today about Trump, I said, if Donald Trump joined Cameo, would you, would you be able to do it? She's like, absolutely not. I'd be gone. And then I asked, well, do you think he should be allowed to be on Twitter? And she said, no. Right. So like, there's. I think, what do you think? He should be allowed on Twitter, right? You can't take the president off Twitter. He Abs is the president. Abs absolutely, right? And yeah. It doesn't, I think it's like Trump, Trump derangement syndrome to but, say, but it's you have to take the president off Twitter. But I, th I do think like for a lot of these things, it's just you know people are 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 getting so polarized one way or another yeah. and everything's weaponized at the end of the day cam is just a platform for fun right? yeah like like, like this is a why place, are we getting dragged into this yeah, th this is <laughs> this place, supposed to be joyful <laughs> this is a place to to go and, and get your buddy a laugh and yeah. uh, you know to make people smile laugh and cry like we're not that's what we try to do Hey everybody, I'm here with my friend Jason Maynard, who works at NetSuite. Tell everybody, what do you do, Jason? You know, I do I do many things here at NetSuite, but I run the field operations for the business unit. And field operations means what? In this Sales, context? marketing, business development, all the stuff in terms of how we acquire customers, take care of them, service them, make sure they're happy. I know what NetSuite does, but for people who are listening, what's the right moment for a startup to engage with NetSuite? Is it at 10 employees, 50, 100, at 1 million in revenue, 10 million, or 100 million in revenue? It's a good question. I think people should engage with NetSuite when they start to lose control over the visibility in their business. Got it. So it depends on if you're, if you're a venture back company, that can happen pretty quick because once you start raising money, then all sorts of pressures and expectations come on you. We deal with some family owned businesses and other startups who may be a little bit later in their life cycle, but it's really when that complexity takes its toll. What's the amount of effort I should expect to put into implementing NetSuite at my company? Is it a 10 hour process, a one hour, a 10 month, a 10 week, 10 day? You know, we've been we've been focused more and more over the last two, three years to make that as simple as possible and, and, and sort of simplifying our packages. So if you're a small business just getting started, raised an A round or something like that, you know, we should be able to get you in in 30, 45 days, get you up yeah. and running. And our goal is to make it as simple as possible for you. And so that hopefully can get you what you need to remove the initial layer of complexity, and then as you grow, you can you can add more of what you need. All right, right now, NetSuite is offering you valuable insights with a free guide, the seven key strategies to grow your profits. So go to netsuite.com slash twist, netsuite.com slash twist, and get that free guide, seven key strategies to grow your profits. We appreciate the work you're doing in the startup community. It's great Thanks, stuff. Thanks, pal. Thanks. All right, we'll be back with more. Who's the one you most want to get? I mean, look. If I'm, you could get anybody... For you personally, give me your top three. Let's work through it right now. We'll workshop it right now. Yeah. You don't have to give me your one, two, and three in order. So but give as me your a, top three. As a Chicagoan, right, I think that uh, Chance the Rapper would just be like incredible, right? He's so wow. now, he's so, you know, Chance is like, I think like the epitome of like kind of cool right now, yeah. right? And, you know, he's a Chicago guy. He he does a lot of work for Chicago public schools. We have a charitable component of Cameo. So a lot of our talent, ah. will, a lot of our talent will do this for charity. So yeah, I'm thinking about doing it for charity. And I, that would should, be why I would do it. And you should be on for, we, yeah. we're starting to get investors and we're starting to get yeah. podcast hosts, all those types of things. I would do it if it, yeah, could go to charity. Because I've I've given myself for lunches a couple of times, like Eric Reese yep. did his new book and he sold three $5,000 lunches with me. Awesome. And I did it for him as a favor. And like, I, I will sell myself for lunch to help people. Fantastic. And for us, makes right, sense to me. at Cameo, what we were building at scale is the marketplace where for X amount of money, you can do Y activity with Z person. Yeah. So for us, this is the entry point. This is the first thing of You're going to do lunches or like the next thing? This is the first thing of many that we want to do. And when Oh, yeah, because you do Cameo. I could do a Cameo like show up for your bar mitzvah. Totally. So the, the, you haven't added that yet. We though. we haven't added that yet. But Who handles that? Speaking bureaus or something? Again, it's it's a broken system. Manager. Right? This is one off. Like Ooh, that seems having, even bigger. Ha like, but at the end of the day, too, it's not as not as many people will be able to afford that. The price mm. point will be higher. But what we built in our B to B to B in our B to C like uh, core cameo business, yeah. it's something that a lot of people can afford. The average video is sixty dollars, right? So it's a lot 
And we, you've done what, 10,000, We've 50, done 300,000. We crossed 300,000 today. Wow. Yeah. An average of 60. So, That's a lot of money. And, and just so you have an idea, on December 1st, we crossed 100K total, and now we've done 200K since then. So the business has been growing. The talent base has been expanding a ton. And, you know, that's so this why, is an eight-figure-a-year business. That's wow. why people are really excited about you know where this is going and, and how quickly you it's raised happening. fifty million from we just Kleiner closed Perkins. we just closed a fifty million dollar round for like twenty uh, percent of the business or a, something. a few weeks ago. Uh, added some incredible partners in uh, Kleiner Perkins and the who's Chern- that Mamoon who did it over uh, Ilian Mamoon. Okay. So Ilya is going to be joining our board. Uh, you know we so what they they buy like twenty percent of the business or something in that range. It was uh, it was it was a. I think it was a really great deal for everybody. Great deal for um, everybody. Okay. Spark Capital came in, which we're excited. So Kevin, uh, who Smart. has spent a lot of time uh, at Twitter, you know, we think it's going to be great. Uh, Bain Capital Ventures, we're really excited about. Oh, Adam Bain. Uh, so Bain Capital Ventures. Oh, Bain. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay. Got Adam Bain, I've got to know very well through the process. I think yeah. he's fantastic. He's awesome. Um, All right. So know. who else is on your big list? You got Chance the Rapper. Got yeah, Chance it. the Rapper. Who else you got? Who else is on that list that would? change everything if they were on the i think obama would be incredible right amazing like, like could you imagine uh, actually i remember when we were pitching ten thousand dollars when we were pitching in dreesen horowitz in our series a i was in a room with the chief of staff uh for Andreessen, and he's running the culture fund now hmm. um and he told me that for kevin durant's birthday nike got him a video cameo of barack obama Wow. So Barack, he, Nike got Barack to wish Kevin Durant happy birthday, and KD thought that was the most incredible, amazing thing ever. And, you know, again, I'm. Wait, a Chicago- did you land in Dreesen as an investor or no? We didn't. We didn't. Uh, we never landed in Dreesen as an investor. But it, again, yeah. it was just a cool, a very cool, like cool use moment. case and yeah. cool moment where you hear that even the people with everything. You have to super vet those people. Then. Even even the people that have everything, this is cool for. You'd have to super vet the people who apply for the Obama thing. Sure, but, double that. But imagine, vet. imagine all the proceeds going for the Obama Foundation, the library. Yeah, right? he would do ten k, ten k a pop, ten k a pop, right? And if he Easy. did, if he did ten k a pop, and he did ten, ten of them a day, which I think he could do, that's seven point six million dollars a year. So it's ridiculous. That's, you fund the whole library. So that that that's and you huge. and you have to you could have it like the script's got to be pre approved by somebody, and it because they were already it's take it or leave it. But they could be like, hey, listen, here's what is a good script. Happy birthday, Jason. Wishing you and your daughters the best. Uh, take care of Fonda, your bulldog. Totally. And then um, and then you think of like the opportunities abroad, right? Thirty mm-hmm. percent of our business come from abroad. And Churning Group's the other uh, partner oh, cool. that we brought into this last round. Peter and Churning. one of the reasons we're so excited to work with Peter and, and Mike Kearns and, and all the guys over there is that they have such deep roots with a lot of the Bollywood influencers yeah. and the K pop and all that Ooh, type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, those are gonna be so, money. So we really think that all over the world talent should be on this. Like all my right, mom Chance Barack, who's the third? Uh, I Who's will there? give this one for my co-founder Martin. Okay, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's not on the platform. That I guy's mean, on everything. I mean, he's got like he does everything. I think he's done Omaze at least three or four times. Yeah, and Arnold needs to be on cameo, right? I think he'd be fantastic. And then again, I'm the Chicago. I could do Arnold for you. I, I'm the Chicagoan, so I. I, I got I've it. never been to Mars, but <laughs> I'm going to come to Bay Ridge I, to hang out with you, Jason. <laughs> Happy birthday! I'm I'm a Chicagoan, so you know Oprah, and Michael Jordan would be. You know, Oprah just, would be amazing. Just incredible too. So our big thing is that, you know, we want to give people the people that they want, right? One of the cool things is if you go to our website and you type in a name of someone we don't have, we track that. And then we you can also sign up ah. and say, if we got Michael Jordan, let me know. Oh, so who's got the most pre-sign ups? So this is super interesting. The yeah. person that gets the most pre-sign ups of anyone in the world is not Justin Bieber. It's not Drake. It's not a Kardashian. It is someone named David Dobrik. David Dobrik is one of the top vloggers in the world. And he gets uh, more requests than anyone. And just so you have an idea, the most famous athlete is number 30, and that's Steph Curry. So, like, there is this huge amount, all of these, you know, massive influencers that haven't even gotten into, like, the lexicon where you would know who they are. Yeah. But, like, to their fans, they are bigger than Justin of Bieber, course. they're bigger than Kim Kardashian, they're bigger than Drake. Mm. And and that's what we think is really interesting. What about live? It would seem to me that doing a FaceTime with somebody would be worth like 
10x or like li- live FaceTiming into a birthday party and you pull me up on the screen and I just yeah. say happy birthday live and you get the video. Look, we've thought a lot about it, but logistically it's like incredibly tough, right? Like we've gotten really good at getting people to turn a 30 second video around in seven days, but saying, hey, Jason, at 4.47 you know, p.m., you know, dial this number. And like, it's not that we can't do it, but you know, we had six employees at the company this time a year ago, right? And now you're so, over 100. And now we're at 120. You So you've added like two people a week for a year. Yeah, and, and most of those, I mean, we had 17 employees on New Year's Day. So most of those have been in the last six months. And, you know, when you think about all of that, it takes to to ingrain someone in the company, so get them week. into the yeah. get them in the culture. You know, it's just a it's it's a lot. And what are they all doing? Like recruiting people or customers? Yeah, a support? lot of them. Um, the two teams that have really grown the biggest are our talent acquisition team, oh. and then our talent relations team, who works with the talent that we have. So ultimately, we're set up similar to like a B two B SaaS company, right? We've got our hunters and we've got our farmers. And our farmers, what they're really doing is they're helping with fulfillment, helping the talent get themselves booked more, and then pushing them for referrals. So that's really how it's set up. Wow. This is an amazing business. Like, it's so interesting when you think about it. People are all concerned about what will people do for work. Yep. And if I told you 20 years ago, like in the 90s, well, there would be a couple of hundred thousand people who look into their webcam and talk about their life. Yep. And they'll make a living. YouTube and not stars. Only that, but they, they are their engagement. They're bigger than Hollywood stars in many right. ways. And if I told you they would, and then I told you there's a group of podcasters who get more listens than any cable TV news program does. Yeah. More than Charlie Rose. More than Anderson Cooper. More than uh, whoever that guy was. Uh, who was the guy who? Used not to be- more than Howard Stern, but almost. Well, Howard Stern's only yeah. two million people now. Three million people totally. listen every day now because there's thirty you, million you people talk on about Sirius. You someone like David Dobrik. David Dobrik has six million followers on Instagram. But like, if you look at his picture, he gets like one and a half to two million likes per picture. Bonkers. So one third of all of his subscribers are engaging with every piece of content he puts on, and his YouTube channel is, you know, just another level of engagement. Yeah. So podcasters, Vine, YouTube stars, they're, they're all these new jobs that didn't exist in the world on this long tail. And cameos are another one where yep. like people could literally make this their living. Yep. And there are some who are making it their living. Absolutely. We, we hear all the time from talent that are putting their kids through school with this who are, yeah. um, you know, especially like, look, the entertainment world is really tough. I remember Andy Dick uh, came to our Christmas party this year and he, he said, Stephen, thank you for giving me the Andy Dick show back. You know, uh, that show hasn't been off, but but we gave him his audience back. And, yeah. and this was something that he was so you know, so excited about to, to reach his fans. And I think one thing that's so cool about the rise of YouTube. So our very good buddy, Cody Co, uh, is someone that like moved to LA. He wanted to be an actor, right? And he's gone out and tried to cast himself for everything, but you know, you're too short or you don't mix with this co-star or you're not funny enough. And ultimately YouTube allowed someone like Cody to just start putting content out there. Yeah. And then people vote with their pocketbook, yeah. right? They vote and they, and they subscribe to their channel and they buy his merch and they subscribe to his Patreon and they buy his cameos. It's and undeniable. They go, the, and they the go to, and they go to his level now and they go to his live shows and you don't need you know, we're right next to Lionsgate. You don't need Lionsgate anymore. You don't need their permission. You don't need their permission. And you needed the permission. So I think the thing that's so fascinating about this new culture is that, you know, if back in the day there were three television channels and then when cable happened, there were like a hundred, a hundred and then satellite and there were a thousand today, everyone's their own channel. Yeah. And you don't need permission. And it's never been a, more of a meritocracy. If you're funny if you're interesting, you're going to get some audience if you put the work in. Yeah. And everybody complains like, oh my God, there's, you know, breaking in is so hard. It's like, um, start a podcast, do it for three years every week, do 150, and then tell me. Like, people ask me, like, hey, how do you become successful in podcasting? Yep. I'm like, get to year 10. Totally. Like, year 10, we sold out our podcast. Yep. And we're at a thousand episodes now. It's like, totally. Years one through five are just the warm up. Put yep. the time in. And, and, you know, we say in our business all the time that uh, trust equals consistency over time, right? Yeah. And now your 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 trust equals consistency over time. Yeah. Got it. And your your listeners, you know, 
over a long period of time, they're trusting that you're going to put more content. Same with YouTubers, right? Yeah. They trust that they're going to, I want to subscribe to this channel and I know that I'm going to get three videos a week. And, and you know, it's it's just like Game of Thrones. If you're a Game of Thrones fan and you don't yeah. know when the next episode's coming out, like... I think so that's why Joe Rogan is just... Huge. And Ben Shapiro have taken off. People are like, why are Ben Shapiro and Joe Rogan... Yeah, of everybody. Of, of, any, of everybody in the top five or 10 podcasts. It's like... Do you notice the frequency? Yeah. Ben is five days a week for three hours a day. I think he does like a 45 minute podcast and then he does like two hours on the radio with his crew. So it's almost like a radio show, like a morning Z morning show. And then Joe Rogan is five days a week. Yep. And I think actually Ben Shapiro started doing a Sunday show now, the interview show. So he's doing six shows a week. I'm at two or three a week. If you just keep doing more shows, the audience gets clicked into listening to you every day. They need content every day. And it's actually kind of similar, right? So after this, up, very similar to Cameo, right? Yeah. In this case, I'm a guest. I'm going to tweet out that I was on this when sure. that episode comes. People in my network will start following yeah. and listening. But it's a very similar distribution Your mom. model. Yeah, my mom will start. Especially Rest in peace, yeah, yeah. She hears Sorry that you're she Greek, passed. so she'll be, you know, just like she asked me all the time, why aren't the Greek singers on Cameo yet? Yeah. You know, so she will be very excited. Uh, you know, to, she make good be, saganaki? Uh, she, no, what but she? she makes the best avalamo soup you've ever oh, had. So next okay. time we're in Chicago, come over to my mom's yeah. house. She co cooks up a nice My mom makes the best panacopitas. Her, and she's that, Irish. My mom learned how to make panacopitas for my dad. The best my avalamo mom, soup. Really? You've ever had. Unbelievable. It's next level. I'm I'm just saga knocked out. There's a there's actually in L.A. There's the Great Greek in the Valley. Have you been to it? I haven't been there, but I've been to the one in Malibu. Yes. What's yes. that one called? Uh, I forgot the name right now. But yes, Tony Savalas used to yeah. go there. He's another. Great I think it's Greek. called Tony's. It is Tony's, Tony's Taverna. Yeah, Tony's Taverna. Yeah. And I think Tony Savalas used to be an investor in it. Yeah. Um, but there's one called the Great Greek. Yeah. Up here in the, the valley. Awesome. And it's a silly name, but he has Greek music on the weekends. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. And uh, the Saganaki and everything is just, it's it's literally as Greek as Greek gets. <laughs> uh, and then in the valley, of course, when you come up, we have Evera and Kokari, I, owned I by the same group. I haven't been to Kokari. I've oh, heard really? it's just fantastic. Oh, so when you, when you come next to town, time, we'll go to Next Kukari, time, I'm, I'm in. The uh, Terra Musulata. Yeah. Cafetes. I mean, just. Yeah, I've I've heard I've heard great things. The Saganaki is just yeah. out of and the octopus. Well, we're we're pretty it. spoiled at Greek town in Chicago. It doesn't. Get oh much my god! Yeah, than I know. That. I had a Greek friend there, another entrepreneur, and he would take me out, and I was just like, "Wow, Greek town is legit." Yeah, I mean, there's very yeah. few places you can get legit Greek food. Totally, uh, and that's one of them. All right, Snoop Dogg for five hundred, Charlie Sheen for five fifty, Stormy yep. Daniels two fifty, Heidi Montag a hundred, Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah, baby, twenty five hundred. I so had to another, get my year, baby. In. As you're going oh, through baby. those prices, another really interesting, a new vertical that we're kicking off. So we have nine talent on the platform. So obviously these are all B two C today, right? Yeah. But we've had a lot of businesses that have tried to reach out to the talent to you know do almost cheap influencer marketing. Yeah. And and we we're launching right now with nine of our talent in beta, basically this like. This B two B micro endorsement, mm. where instead of five fifty for Charlie Sheen for five grand, he'll make an endorsement for your business that you can then ah. put money behind on Facebook or Instagram, and you basically created a new commercial. Got so it. we think that that could be a really interesting That's a new great one, um, new new vertical. And you know, there's people like Brett Favre, for example, that. You just have you know, to have a term. You just have to give them a term. Like you can do this for one year. Totally. And you can you spend give, this you, amount you give, of views. You give them a term. So that's something we're experimenting with right now. But you know, as you're thinking about us, you know, if we were actually we believe there's five million people in the world that could make cameos. That's for sure. That's what we believe. And when you think about all the other things that we could do with them, this is the first stage, but that's a cool one where we didn't even have to build a new product for, right? It's just, it's a new term and it's something that your know, businesses are super excited because they don't know how to get to Charlie Sheen. You're going to do, if you're at 300,000 total cameos done, there's no reason you can't be doing a million to 5 million cameos a year. Yeah. A million cameos a year at $60, 60 million. This is why Kleiner Perkins is interested because- if you did a million of them at 60 a year, you're taking 25%. Okay, so now you got 15 million. You 10X from there, you're at 150 million. Now you're a unicorn business, right? So yeah, we, it's pretty you know, straightforward how this becomes a unicorn. You just have to 10X and 10X again. So we, you know, and, and, and at the end of the day, like we really tell everyone that we're at the top of the first inning, top of the second inning with this For business, sure. right? Obviously, Who's the we, competitors? Patreon, you think? 
it, or Omaze? The, the, the Who comes up most? To be honest, it really just comes down to like, are the talent willing to do this or not? Ah. They're not not joining Cameo because they're on something else. That is not that is not at all the mm. case. It's really there's still for some talent there's still this idea of like should I be charging my fans? And one of the things that we explain to them is the ultimate recipient is usually not getting um, not not getting charged, right? You're buying right, for gift. you're buying for Nick, yeah, and then Nick's gonna get it for free and be surprised yeah. and, and have this amazing reaction, and you're gonna yeah. film it and you're gonna send it to it's Snoop like somebody Dog buying an autographed picture of you or, or something or an autographed baseball. And it's funny because these same people, right? They sell T-shirts, they sell. Uh, the, the, you know, they, I mean, they have Patreons. They sell tickets to their live. Or if they're William Shatner, they're, they'll sit there and sign, you know, a thousand autographs for a hundred dollars each. Totally. Or they go to conventions and comic cons and all that type yeah. of stuff. So for us, a lot oh, of people that were telling us no two years ago are now coming on the of platform. Course. And yeah. you know, and th the other thing that's exciting too is the talent just love doing it. We have on the customer side, we have an eighty six customer NPS. So that's the ridiculous. customers love this product. Of course. The talent you know, we're in the high 70s, low 80s last time I looked at the talent NPS. And the number one thing when we asked them, what, you know, how can we make Cameo better? They just want to do more of them. Yeah. They love doing them. Yeah. And, you know, for a long time, we really had a supply side constraint. And now the bigger questions are about when you have 17,000 and growing roster, yeah, getting everybody search and discovery. Yeah. And how do we, you know, how do we make sure that all throughout our marketplace, people are being able to find the people you mm -hmm. want because there's such a big roster now that- Did you get George Takei? Um, oh my. I'm not sure if we have him. Andy Monakis is on, he does great. Oh, Andy? I'm yeah. friends with Andy, he's yeah, another Andy, Greek. Andy does we, great. Uh, Andy and I, uh, we trade a lot of uh, tweets back and forth because he's yeah. a foodie too. Yeah. So we're always talking about food. He, Actually, you know what, we should all, we, me, you, and Andy should go out and get food yeah. in LA. I would love, that I'd would love be to. a good Greek crew. We've That'd been, be a good Greek squad. Andy, Andy and I have uh, tried to meet up a couple times. Um, I actually booked him when my cousin was having her first kid. Uh, I Did he had, rap? I booked Andy to help her name, to come up with suggestions for, for, oh, for the kid. And he's like, you should name him Andy Milanakis Furla. <laughs> you know, like. He's like a great, you know, he's a great freestyle rapper. People don't know that about Andy yeah. Milanakis, but he, he can freestyle. Oh, he, you know, he's an absolute riot. And again, that's like a, like Andy's such a core cameo person, huge personality. And, yeah. and like, you know, when you see where he's doing these videos, it's like, they're, they're so authentic and unique and, and that's what makes a great cameo. Yeah. All right. Listen, continued success with it. Uh, congratulations on the raise. Uh, congratulations on, uh, yeah, everything. It's amazing. What an overnight success. Five years in the making. Well, we got to, uh, we got to get you on the platform. I'm going to do it for charity. Great. And I got to pick my charity and I'll do like maybe a couple of months and I'll probably do it. See, my audience has got money. Yeah. So it's not a it's not a money issue for them. They probably pay 500 or $1,000 well, each one time. Thing, one thing, look, you keep it a little lower. You'll have entrepreneurs give you deal flow. I mean, mm, like that's literally, true Ilya's, I think Ilya does them for 10, 10 bucks. Really? The moon, I think is like 50, but like literally people, I know I was talking with Ilya last week. And some, right, maybe I'll set it at 50, but. S some engineering team reached out to Ilya uh, to, to pump their engineering team up. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, like some of our, especially our early investors, like Rob Chesney at Chicago Ventures, Rob's had entrepreneurs literally pay to, to get in front of him. So, you know. Yeah, that I don't like, but, I, but if it went to. Could be the future of deal flow. No, no, I had like it was like literally what was that earn dot earn dot co. It was like earn dot co, right? Yeah. But yeah, they were that was an Andreessen well, Horowitz. Yeah, and Balaji. Balaji went to yep. Coinbase. Balaji is one of our angel investors. Yeah, uh, no, it was a he's smart fantastic. idea. Like uh, he, I used to get questions there, and I just said, "Oh, Black Girls Who Code is yep. like one of the top three yep. nonprofits." I was like, "Great!" And I think I made like a thousand dollars. They cool. don't even know probably that I gave it to them, yep. but I set mine at a hundred dollars. Yep. And I got a dozen questions. I answered them. I was like, great. This is cool. good for them. Yep. Uh, all right. Listen, continued success. Congratulations. Uh, and we'll see you all next time. Thanks again to NetSuite for hosting us here at their Santa Monica Thanks office. for having me. Cheers. Bye.